What is up, Detroit Lions fans? This is not the bad guy, John Kapler, but I'm gonna try to do my best here for the Detroit Lions. Well, it's cooling, by the way. My name is G-Sling. I'm doing my thing. Pardon me out in the rain, but hopefully get some nice drip action vibes, ASMR. I don't know, <laughs> none of that stuff, but anyway, let's go and get into the Detroit Lions. All you Lions out there, don't leave me alive. I know you're coming for me after this mock draft, but we are going to be doing a seven round mock draft and a roster breakdown. So without further ado, let's start off with the roster portion of this before we get into the draft. In the offensive line, which has been a top five unit, top three unit, and what I'll say here is you do have a couple of needs we're going to be talking about. Let's start off with the left side, left tackle, Taylor Decker, who's been as solid, stout as can be. Uh, it, yeah, when healthy, which he's been mostly healthy this year. Panay Sewell filled in for him early on in the season. But with that being said, I do think the future of this position slash right tackle could be a need for them. I do think what will end up happening is Panay Sewell will be that long-term left tackle when Taylor Decker, because he's only under contract for one more season. So 2025, there will be a vacancy at the tackle position for them. And I don't really see anybody on this roster that is going to be that future tackle, whether that's the left tackle or, or you know, or the vacancy of that position, which I, I ultimately think Sewell will probably be the left tackle of the future, but you don't have a right tackle of the future or like I talk about if left tackle, if they want to keep Panay over at the right tackle position. So I would be looking at drafting, developing somebody in that mold who can be that long-term tackle. And then we go into the interior of this offensive line. Jonah Jackson, he's solid, man. Jonah Jackson, I don't think he's an elite guard, but he's a solid guard. He's somebody that's a starter in the NFL. You'd rather have him on your team, especially on a rookie contract. Do they end up paying him? That'll be the big question. How much money does he want? So those are big discussions Brad Holmes is going to have to have with Jonah Jackson, whether he stays or whether he goes. Um, and then you at center, you're at Frank the Tank. I would just say bring back, if you can, Graham Glasgow or bring back somebody on the cheap because Tank does get injured quite a bit. He's a great center when he's out on the field. But once again, he does deal with a lot of injuries. We could also look at drafting somebody uh, to be a backup for them. But I would say you just bring in a free agent here because Tank is still under contract for the next three, four years or whatever it is. I think it's like three, at least three years that he's under contract. So I'm not looking to replace him or any sort of long-term viable you know, starter for him. I would just say bring in a free agent so that way you have a nice backup slash bring Glasgow back because he gives you that versatility on your offensive line. Right guard. And this goes hand-in-hand -hand with the guard position. Uh, you got Holiday Valta, who was also a free agent. I don't think he'll be back. Uh, and, and, and I do think that a guard is a need for them. So maybe drafting a guard or a tackle that can play guard early on and be that long-term tackle who can stick into guard early on. That's, that's kind of my mold of this. And that's kind of where I'm looking to go for this team. And then right tackle, obviously, Panay Sewell is one of the best, if not the best, tackle in the NFL right now. He is just so good, man. Panay Sewell locked and loaded. At least one of your tackles, whether it's that left tackle position or the right tackle position for the future. On to the receiving core, though. And it's been pretty dang solid, man. It, it definitely has, especially even with Jamison Williams being out for the, you know, half the season or whatever. He's come back, and he's, he's been okay, but talking about this group that's been able to step up, Josh Reynolds has looked really good. He's been clutch, too, and when they needed him, he's been stepping up. He's been a really solid number two. I did not expect this going into the year. I didn't think Reynolds was, you know, really going to play like this. He's played really solid to the point where he's earned an extension. Like, I would be looking at giving him, like, a two-year extension if possible, as long as it's not, like, a crazy amount or anything like that. But I would definitely pay him over Donovan Peoples-Jones. I'll tell you that right now. Not say Donovan Peoples-Jones is terrible. We'll see if, you know, when he gets more playing time. But him and uh, Jared Goff have really good chemistry, too. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, obviously the wing dragon of Raw. He's your stud. Um, but once again, hopefully Jamison Williams will take those next steps and be that long-term number two for Amon Ross St. Brown with the deep threat. Um, but Josh Reynolds, definitely a guy you look to try to bring back if you can. If you can't, which I don't know, we'll see what ends up happening there. No matter what, I would say third to fifth round is, is kind of where I'd be looking to draft a, a long-term, maybe an X type, not an X, but yeah, I mean, maybe an, a possession style of guy on the outside, a perimeter type of receiver. Tight end, you're good to go. Sam Laporta. Laporta potty. Dude, he's unbelievable. I didn't expect, I mean, I really liked Laporta, but I didn't like, I didn't know if he was going to be this good, man. He is the best tight end in this draft. Like, he straight up has been the best tight end in this draft. I mean, Kincaid's been really good. They, they've been a solid tight end. Musgrave's been solid. But Laporta is in a difference maker of him. He looks to be like this next 
Kelsey Gronk potential. Like, there's all... I think he's a top five tight end already in the NFL. Like, no joke. I think he probably is a top five tight end. So, just continue to get better with the drops. Sometimes some concentration drops with Laporta. But for the most part, I've seen that he was just balling out. He's been their second best target on this team. Uh, maybe you bring in a backup tight end if you don't bring back Brock Wright. So, maybe draft someone late as a, as a developmental piece and then maybe a free agent. That's really all I can say of this tight end room. It's, it's really solid. Maybe Mitch can step up and be that guy at long term. And then on to the running back room, which is definitely not to eat him. You got Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery. I know the controversial J Jameer Gibbs pick, but once again, he provides a different, you know, that Christian McCaffrey type of ability in my eyes. So yeah, a little early, don't you know, but at least they traded down for it. David Montgomery is really good too. So I mean, what a great tandem this is. You know, you didn't think it could get better than it was last year. Well, it did. Uh, besides that, maybe you find a depth piece or bring back Bam Knight, who I can't believe the Jets freaking let go of. I like Bam Knight a lot. It pisses me off. Anyway, I'd keep him around. I really would. It's not a need. On to the quarterback room here, Jared Goff. He's been really, really solid. Now, I struggled the uh, past couple of games. You know, especially like Baltimore, that was probably the worst game that I saw. It looks like from the, I, I haven't watched the Bears game yet, but it looks like he struggled a bit in that one too. He struggled a little bit, all, you know, the Packers game and a couple of interceptions early on. So, obviously, Jared Goff's still a little versatile, a little volatile, should I say. Hannon Hooker maybe can be the quarterback of the future. I'm, I'm not looking to draft anybody right now. Uh, even though Goff's contract, you know, it's going to be going into his last year to deal. I would let, I'd rather just wait, see what you got in Hooker, and then maybe when the time comes, you can talk about an extension and or maybe drafting a quarterback next year. But for me right now, I, I think Jared Goff, you roll with Jared Goff. He's, he's playing at a high level. This team's... Uh, they're rolling with him, so I'm not I'm not looking to make any improvements here. Let's go on to the defense, though, and definitely probably the more of the bigger changes need to be made here on the defense side of the ball, um, you know, in terms of draft needs and whatnot, a slash free agency type of needs. Starting off with the defensive line, and Aiden Hutchinson, obviously your number one. Now, and, and when you get James Houston back, that's going to be huge for this team in terms of getting sacks, getting, you know, those pressures. I compare him a little bit to, like, a Bryce Huff, and, and you know, as me as a Jets fan, like, what he can bring I feel like so. Uh, yes, getting him back. He's a restricted free agent, an exclusive restricted, so he'll be back. And I, I don't know if, if the Aquara brothers are going to be back. That's a great question. We shall see. But I, I, I don't know. I'm going to lean towards no on that. John Kaminsky, he's still under contract for one more year. But I would definitely be looking at adding to this room, whether that's free agency, whether that's the draft. I would say both. So I'm going to definitely be looking at this pretty early in the draft. I think it's a, either their first round type of pick or at least a day two selection. On the interior, this is where I would really suggest for them to go out in free agency and address this need. Because I feel like going and getting a Christian Wilkins would be a great addition. Like It just makes so much sense for me to get Christian Wilkins on this defensive line. Obviously, Chris Jones will be the, the sought-after prospect if he doesn't go to the back to the Kansas City Chiefs. And we'll see what happens. Brad Holmes... He hasn't been really a big spender, which I like about him, and he's been really, really disciplined. I feel like he does a good job, you know, getting some steals out there in free agency and being overall, you know, financially, they do a good job. Ali McNeil, unfortunately, getting injured there really sucks for this defensive line. It's going to be a big loss for them. Um, Levi Onzerike just hasn't really been able to step up just yet. Maybe he's finally getting turned in the corner, getting healthy. So maybe at some point, Broderick Martin, you figure, is going to be the long term at least nose tackle for them. I think he's going to be a nice run defender. I don't know if he's going to add a ton of pass rush to this room. So I would definitely be looking to, you know, and I don't see it with Benito Jones, Isaiah Bugs, more rotational player. They did bring in Tyson Alalu, so maybe he can be someone this year. But long term, once again, they, they're going to need somebody. I This is where I would use some of that 50 plus million dollars in cap space to go out and get us, you know, maybe that stud next to Ali McNeil. So that's what I would do personally. Maybe you can go out and draft somebody too. I think that's definitely possible. Maybe Leonard Taylor is available for them. I could very much see that. That would be a really good addition too. But in this mock draft, I'm going to go ahead and say, let's bring in a free agent. Maybe the next one I'll say, let's bring in a free agent edge and then go from there. But with the youth that they do have with Martin and Ali McNeil, I'm going to lean towards getting a free agent on the interior of the defensive line. And then with John Kaminsky being the veteran, I'm going to look at the edge route for this team. Then on to the linebacking core, which is not really a need for me. Maybe a late round type of thing. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I'd be looking at this. Alex Anzalone is under contract for one more year. So, but, my, you know, Captain Jack's going to take over that mic role for the future. And Anzalone, I will say this real quick. Anzalone, from my eyes, had his best season, you know, in his career. Like, he's made a lot of plays for this team. So, I, I would be looking to keep him if you can. I mean, he's not an expensive cap hit or nothing like that. 
But overall, Derek Barnes had his best season, too. Maybe I need to bump him up a little bit. He's been a really good blitzer for this team. He's been their best blitzing linebacker. Anzalone's been, you know, decent, too. But Captain Jack, Alex Anzalone, Derek Barnes, solid group. You got Malcolm Rod. Even Jalen Reese Maven's not a bad man. Maybe if you want to bring him back for, you know, a cheap contract as a fifth linebacker for them. But, you know, long-term wise, Derek Barnes on going into the last year of his contract. Alex Anzalone going into the last year of his contract. Maybe they look at this at the end of the draft as maybe like a hybrid blitzer type of guy. You got your Mike linebacker, so maybe look at a blitzer type for the future. That's the only thing I would suggest here. So, yeah. On to the cornerback room. This area needs to be improved upon. Uh, I mean... What I mean by this is that I think they need to, obviously, ideally, maybe first round you could find a stud. And I, I very much think that corner in the first round will be in play for this team. So while Jerry Jacobs will be back, he'll be back, I really doubt, unless they sign somebody big in free agency, which could be a possibility, then they would just say, hey, we're going to move on. Or I would still bring back Jerry Jacobs. They've got the exclusive. Uh, he's a restricted, I believe. I don't know if he's an exclusive. Either way, they still have first dibs on him. And if somebody's really going to sign him, then they would probably hit him with a second round tender. So I'm, I'm guessing that's what they're going to do, or at least something like that. Cameron Sutton, you know, has been fine. He's that veteran presence to have, but you, you still need a number one. You got Brian Branch, who's been really, really good in the slot so yeah finding that outside corner Emmanuel Mosley would have been so nice to have him this year because I feel like he would have been able to elevate this cornerback room at least a little bit more maybe they bring him back once again on the cheap if he wants to try to prove it bring another one-year contract for him we shall see but no matter what this this cornerback room needs to be upgraded draft free agency something to you know again it's not been bad but I do think that this this room still needs some improvement going forward they've been kind of mid-tier so let's improve it some more if we can get this to more of a top 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 10 type of unit is at least what I'm trying to do here on to the safety room, and the safety room's been fine. I mean, it's been a good unit, even with C.J. Garner Johnson still waiting on his uh, arrival here to get back healthy, which will be huge for this team. So hopefully he's coming back soon. I've heard in some rumble he's, he's he's getting ready, getting getting amped up. So hopefully he can get back because obviously if he comes back, you got Chauncey Garner Johnson, Kirby Joseph, Tracy Walker. Like that's a really good tandem. Now C.J. Garner Johnson is a free agent, so. With that being said, uh, do, does he end up coming back? Does he not? I think this could be something where Tracy Walker's still under contract. They could let him go and save a, like $5 million, but probably not going to do that. I guess if you do it a post-June 1st, then you save more this year, and then the dead cap would be spaced out between 24 and 25. That could be an option, but I wouldn't do that either because Walker's decent. Kirby Joseph's solid, of course. So finding the, the safety for the future could be something here. So maybe you draft somebody in the mid-round. Maybe third round, it opens up for them. Third to sixth round at least trying to find somebody to be a nice developmental piece for them in the long term but my suggestion would be try to bring back Gardner Johnson if you can and then you got Tracy Walker Kirby Joseph and then the developmental type of safety for the future for them for that Tracy Walker type role so let's go and go on to the draft though now we got seven picks and starting off this draft, I'm going defense, offensive line ja, gotcha <laughs> I know I know but hey hear me out on this um, I really think Sue Matea is a perfect fit for this team. You plug him into one of those guard positions, and he just fits the mold of this team. He's like Penesal Light, if you want to put it that way. I'm a huge fan of Sue Matea, and it's so hard. It is really, really difficult to find tackles. Maybe in this class you could find a tackle, especially they don't need a tackle day one, right? So maybe realistically they go after a tackle slash guard to play on day two and i'll do a different mock draft with this lions team i'm gonna do at least two more for the detroit lions but i really like sumate i love the fit he's just a perfect scheme fit for this team and he also feels like a lion so you're putting him in here at guard he can play right guard for them you know he can play on the right side he can play on the left side he's proved it you put him over in that right guard position, you bring back Jonah Jackson. Kingsley Sumate can be that long-term heir apparent at right tackle, and then Panay Sewell will be that long-term left tackle there for Taylor Decker. And that's kind of my eyes of this for this offensive line. Keep a strength, a strength. Protect Jared Goff or Hendon Hooker, whatever quarterback is under center. Have a great run game. That's been this team's MO. So I'm going to keep that as a strength. Kingsley Sumate is really good of a prospect. There's a lot of learning curve things he still needs to go upon, right? But I think he has all the tools, the athleticism, the raw power. He has the potential to be a top 10 type of guard 
tackle, whatever you want to look at it as. On to our second round. We're going defense here. Jack Sawyer, Captain Jack, number two. We're going Captain Jack from the Ohio State this time. And they're going to go get an edge rusher. He uh, is another one of those guys, I don't know, fits the lion mold and the Dan Campbell type of thing. Look, Jack Sawyer gets, you know, I get it. He's not super flashy guy, okay? He's not going to be that hot dude that people are talking about. Hot dude. <laughs> what I meant by that, <laughs> I mean by that, like, he's not going to be that flashy piece that's flying off the edge, you know, Charles Robinson type of guy. <laughs> but uh, anyway, he's the guy who solid in run defense. Like, he just knows how to stack and shed. He knows how to hold an edge. Um, be reliable in the run game and he's just a solid number two like he can get after the quarterback he's got a couple of pass rush moves that he's able to use consistently and overall he can do what you ask for him he can drop back into coverage if you really need him to so he played jack linebacker last year for this team um, so jack sawyer really really solid edge just a really really good quality number two guy for you know i've compared him even to a little bit of a sam hubbard type of guy on to our third round pick. This is the dude I'm really, really high on. Max Melton. Melton, my heart. I think he's a really, really good corner. Somebody that's being underrated right now. And what I love about him is he's a he's got ferociousness in the runs game. He's not afraid to come out and play special teams either. Like he has made some key block punts for this team. He has made key um, gunner plays for this team for Rutgers. He's just a jack of all trades. Man coverage, solid. He's got good burst. I feel like he covered Marvin Harrison as some of the best corner other than Benjamin Morris. I feel like he's number two in terms of the way he covered Marvin Harrison Jr. He had a couple of penalties on him, but overall, really, really solid. I like his speed. Maybe not crazy deep speed, but he's got good agility and overall acceleration to thrive. If he needs to play man coverage, he's got decent length, and he also has um, uh, decent zone coverage, like feel. He's Actually, I think he's better in zone coverage even than in man coverage because he just he really understands zone coverage at a high level so somebody here that i think could be a solid number four corner yes maybe not that clear number one upgrade right now but just kind of the way this draft went for me i still feel like it's gonna be an upgrade for them long term on to brendan rice here uh, i decided to go with a receiver over maybe a safety at this point I just feel like maybe get a, uh, you know, that number four receiver in here, maybe that long-term number three. Brendan Rice can be that outside big body type of receiver for them. If Donovan Peoples-Jones, maybe, again, we got to see more of that. Maybe Josh Reynolds ideally gets re-signed, and then maybe this becomes more of a, a fourth, fifth, they don't have a fourth-round pick, but maybe a fifth-round type of throw for them. But for the time being, with Josh Reynolds being a free agent, maybe he earns a little bit more money somewhere else. Who knows? But I'm going to go Brendan Rice here, who's got really good ball skills and good body control too for his size decent speed as a, as well so uh, another one you know jerry rice had good speed in pads i don't know if he's going to test up the wazoo but i think he's got pretty dang good speed in pads so you get another receiver to be that bodied outside receiver big body outside receiver then we go on to lathan ransom from the ohio state universe going back to ohio state in this case and i'm going to get a developmental type safety i think he'll be a good special teamer early on and he's got good speed he's got really really solid speed but he's really good around the box. That's the big thing with him. So I think he can fit right. I mean, Tracy Walker also plays deep. And, and I think uh, Ransom will also be solid where he can play two high shells. I don't think he's a free safety, but they don't need that, right? They got Kirby. So I think Ransom can be a guy who instinctually around the box and makes plays in the run game and stuff like that. And then Tyron Hopper, he kind of fits that blitzer type of mold for them. And I just felt like this would be a really good fit because they do blitz their linebackers quite a bit. And Tyron Hopper's a really, really good blitzer there. Yes, he's not going to be this type of guy that's your stack and shed dude, right? I think that's why he'll fall in the draft, his body size and, and stuff like that. He's just not, that's not his game, right? He'll get destroyed by offensive linemen. So yes, he's not really this three down type of linebacker maybe, but as a rotational blitzer, he's going to be dangerous. He's really an attacker. So just getting that maybe for that Derek Barnes type of mole for the future. And then finally, with our last pick, I'm going to go with McClellan Castles from Tennessee, the tight end prospect. I actually feel like is a deep sleeper in this class. For me, I think he's really athletic for his size. At six foot five, 252 pounds, this guy moves pretty dang well. I think he's got some bursts where he can get over linebackers if you need him to be. So definitely go check this. I don't know. I think he's, he's going to be on my underrated list. I'll just tell you that right now when I come out with that here in a little bit. But Castles, great name as well. McCullen Castles, but he can be a really nice backup tight end. I haven't watched a ton of him, 
but I've watched some Tennessee games and I've noticed I'm like, oh, this Castles guy, he can, he can make some plays, man. So I haven't watched him in terms of pure blocking, but I feel like he can fit in with his size. He's got a decent size. So, you know, teach him up can be that long term answer for Brock, Brock Wright as that number two tight end for them. So that is our draft here, our seven picks. Let me know what you think on these seven picks, but let's go into how the roster would look, how everything would kind of put together. And as I talked about with Kingsley Sue and Matea, I just, I'm a huge fan of him, and I think you put him in here at guard early on, let him iron out some of his deficiencies, and then he ends up being that long-term tackle. Whether that's the left tackle or the right tackle, I think ideally for this team, they're going to move Panay Sewell over to left tackle, be that blindside protector, and then you have Kingsley Sewell Matea as that long-term right tackle, and you just keep this team rolling with that offensive line firepower. And then we add in some help at the receiver core with Brennan Rice, um, just to be that, maybe that long-term Josh Reynolds type of replacement, be that fourth receiver for, for injuries, whatever. I mean, you got Cleef Raymond, who's a good fourth receiver too. But yeah, I just feel like Brennan Rice can be a nice long-term X for them, especially if they don't bring back Josh Reynolds. Maybe it's a little bit early if they bring back Josh Reynolds, as I talked about. Maybe you look at more as a fifth round sort of need. But I went after it in the third round there. Felt like there was good value. And then McClellan Castles is a nice little backup tight end. But that's really all we did on the offense side of the ball. On the defense side of the ball, Yes, we didn't spend an early pick, so maybe you don't have a day one impact. This is where I talk about try to use some of that cast space. Go get a stud on that interior defensive line, man, to help pair up with Lane McNeil. I just feel like that'd be a dream scenario. Go get a Christian Wilkins if you can. Spend a little bit of money, but I think it'd be worth it for them. And then James Houston coming back will be huge just in terms of getting consistent pressure, too, other than Aiden Hutchinson. Jack Sawyer will contribute early on. Like I think he's an instant impact. We'll be able to play like two, 300 snaps early on in his career. And then cornerback Max Melton, who I believe can be a day one impact. That's me. But realistically, obviously, I understand this is a third round pick. You're probably not getting a day one starter. There's a chance, but let's be realistic. You're probably not. I still feel like Max Mellon can be a long term upgrade over Jerry Jacobs or, you know, I mean, again, Jacobs is a fine corner. He really is. But at least you're getting some more depth in here. Maybe you bring in another free agent. You're probably not going to do that. But who knows? Maybe they do. Maybe they're able to get a stud. Very possible. We'll see how things go there. So we go into the linebacker in position and we just add in Tyron Hopper, as I talk about, just kind of like a blitzer type for them, can be a sub package player. And finally, Latham Ransom will be making his mark on special teams early on, but maybe that long-term Tracy Walker type of mold there for this team. But that is gonna do it here for the Detroit Lions. Let me know what you think, agree or disagree. What did I mess up? What would you do differently? And and uh, all those different, because there's a lot of different scenarios. You got to attack the defense, get some more defense line presence, try to improve the secondary if possible, offense line, keep that a strength. Those are kind of like my fundamental three things that I, I say you must do. You know what I mean? Like which order you do that, I'm still kind of up for debate with that. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. I hope you guys have a really cool day. My name is G Slang. I am doing my thing. I hope you do too out there.